All right, um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of the Nightmares podcast, today we have Dennis. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the, um, my, the... Of Preston Perspectives. He made this mask. <laughs> I, I can confirm that fact. I did indeed make that mask. <laughs> the... And he's actually made a lot of other really cool stuff as well. Um, uh, we had him on the podcast before. We actually invaded his studio. So now he's invading our <laughs> studio, which is pretty nice. We figured it was only fair. Um, and uh, he actually designed the masks for episode four and has also done a lot of amazing things. And uh, we were really immature the last time we saw him in his, in his uh, studio. We played with monster penises for about an hour. Um, uh, Dennis was the only professional in this. Like, you know, we were the ones who were the fucking morons. We're like, oh, my God. It's a, it's a monster penis. The, uh, look at this monster penis. It's I, great. I do want to correct you, though. But Oops. I do want to correct you, though, and say that uh, Sarah was the one who designed them. I I created them. That is, I do want to correct that you correct. on that one. He is a, a, these a much better on the terminology than I am, and I apologize. Um, I'm sure I'll hear an earful about that later. Um, <laughs> the uh, so, Yes, um, the lovely Sarah Tchaikovsky did do the concept art and design these. Dennis was the individual that molded them and... And made them into creation and also served as our lead um, cult leader um, in episode four, which was pretty dope. So we'll get into that. But uh, but welcome, brother. They, uh, it's Thank so you. Good, it's so good to see you, man. Yeah, same here. It's been it's been a while. Yeah, it has. It has, man. But, yeah, no, no, we're, we're very happy to have you. So I think we'll, what we're going to do is um, we're going to talk about some new stuff that you got going on. So, you know, I. It's actually been really cool. So I think we did the interview with you what three years ago, um, there thereabouts. I think so. so Twenty eighteen, about Jesus, nineteen, maybe? 19? nineteen. So yeah, so about three years now. So okay, uh, can we get a fact check, please? They, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yes. <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't have enough uh, money for to hire a fact checker, fact checker, um, or a Who's fact that checker guy over there. Then they, um, uh, the uh, whoa, <laughs> that's that's creepy. Um, so so the the big thing is, you know, what have what have you been up to? Like, you know, what uh, you know, you got a new store online now and new website so to speak and you got yeah i've been seeing you you know make some good waves on tiktok and do some other good well, shit if you so. call 388 followers a, a wave sure uh, i I, I, I would i would <laughs> i would call that because i think it's more than ours right i think we're only at like 185 oh my so but you know hopefully in three years we'll both be saying ah oh, yes, we yeah. only have that many <laughs> the um uh, the uh, i think that'd be dope so so yeah so what do you you know with your craft and with everything else you know what else you've been doing right now? I, I've been pretty consistent with everything I've, I've been doing as far as, you know, um, you know, getting people contact me for it's like, hey, can you do this project or hey, can you do this poster, or, you know, or vice versa, whatever else. Um, it's been a pretty somewhat steady inflow of, of work. Um, you know, I've been working on I really ooh, I really wish I could talk about this one project. Uh, Talk about it. Yeah, so I, I got, told me I got, branded about a while back. <laughs> I, I I don't remember, but it's it's a, a project called Toad Boy, and I was so excited to to work on it. And I guess all I can say right now, I think, is the fact that it it's probably one of the largest largest and longest makeups I've I've probably done. It nice. took about seven and a half hours to apply, uh, and that's with two people uh, wow. applying to one person for seven and a half hours. It was a phenomenal, I can't wait to share it. I can't wait to, to see the final product. It is just, oh, it's just so cool. Um, but uh, things like that. And then I've been getting, uh, you know, other gigs for other movies and things like that that might be happening later on in the year. Um, I don't remember which ones I'm able to talk to, talk <laughs> about or not. So I'm just going to say I, I'm very busy with what I've been doing. <laughs> As far as the store, for a while, I've been trying to find the best way to do an online store. Because for me, whenever I sell stuff, it's usually at shows and conventions or whatever, like where I met you guys at. And I, I like interacting with the people face to face kind of thing and just having a store where people just send me money and I send them a thing without any interaction whatsoever is very weird to me. But I've never had much experience with doing that in the first place. So my friend Stephanie, uh, a wanderlust underscore commission, I think, is what her tag is. Uh, she she showed me uh, on this one site how to do uh, uh, set it up where she set up her own store, and I I set it up, and it's like, hey, this this works. So <laughs> there we are. <laughs> As a shitty explanation, but uh, we got there. We got there. Uh, 
with with some gas to spare. Um, yeah, go ahead. Can you tell us about the Squirrels of War? Ah, yes, the Squirrels of War. So I've been trying to. I, I don't get much time for what I consider personal art. Uh, I mean, everything that I do is my own personal art. It comes out of my head and I, you know, I make it with my own hands, but it's not something where, so I have a series called the failed experiment series and it's done well, really well at shows. And it's really my main moneymaker at most of the shows that I do. And it's something that I started in, in college as a, as a project for one of the classes. And from there, I just started to make more of them. And it's something I just do in my own time. And even though now they, they make money, so it's technically something I really want to do and keep moving forward, but I don't have to. And the same thing is going to go with the Squirrels of War, where it's like it's just something that's fun and that is different from everything else. So instead of, you know, naked zombie bio experiments, they're the the first piece i did is literally a, a a squirrel wielding a sword riding a rooster and you know it's a watercolor painting and it's really cool and i want to create an entire series because a friend of mine uh encouraged me to do so so we're going to have an entire series of original paintings because i don't sell original work either except for you know like masks and you know uh busts and things like that so to sell original illustrations is something uh new for me as well and i'm just trying to branch out into that kind of market where it's like i'm going to do limited prints uh and you know sell the original piece where it's like i really love this but you're going to go to a good home it's okay you can you can it's okay i'm not, <laughs> I, I can let you go because that's how i feel like with the fail experiment series like i i can't imagine selling the original pieces of art because it's like well i spent all these hours on them i was just like I can just print them and make more. It's like, why do I need to sell the originals? <laughs> so I'm trying to break free of that hold on original illustrations and try to sell, uh, you know, share original artwork. Um, so that that's that's one of the main points that I'm starting to Squirrels of War is to try and not hold on to the original pieces. Nice, nice. Are you are you starting to get back into to cons and everything else as we've started to open up and, oh, yeah. and do more things yeah. and everything else? How's that going? How's the circuit going? Yeah, I mean, I haven't done too many this year. Um, it's mainly been like the uh, like the 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 oddities market with the hardcore hearse show and everything like that. Uh, the next one is coming up on June eleventh um, at the Brower House in Lombard. I was really it's looking. It's a plug right there. Go see. Yeah, it. that go, that go that is Dennis. a direct plug. Go see Dennis. Uh, <laughs> Uh, from 2 to 8 p.m. at the Lombard uh, in in Lombard at the Brower House, and uh, there will be the hardcore her shows uh, out of these market. Really, really, really cool. Um, uh, you know, little area and everything else. It's like you yeah. know, it's normally like a rock, rock kind of bar and everything else. Mm -hmm. And and some you know, shout out to uh, Amy and Lawn of Black Martin Brands, um, uh, good friends of ours um, uh, that um, have done a lot of shows. And they and I actually we Zach and I went um, uh, back in December. Um, to go see them and we actually met quite a few people there it was a lot of fun um, so it's a really good show they put on a good show over there they oh, um, yeah. uh, you know it's um, it's definitely they maximize and actually we saw you at the same show they yes. um, uh, they we saw you upstairs they um, <laughs> they were right downstairs they um, uh, you were right next to the snakes and the and the psychics mm -hmm. they um, uh, the uh, the not that anything has to do with anything else but um, <laughs> uh, the uh, yeah we had to walk past a few tarot card readers in order to yeah. get to you so um I had a quick who was the um I didn't quite understand who was the guy that was with you? That was my friend Paul. He's okay. a, a photographer friend that I assist with on on shoots and things like that. Uh, I'm pretty much what he calls his voice activated light stand. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so as I, a, mean, uh, if, uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess it works. You know, the, 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 I mean, that's you know, whatever. So I, I help him move lights. I set up the lights, and you know, he's he's holding the camera. He's shooting. So to help him save time while he's shooting the model. He can just be like, hey, move that light over here, set it to this power and do whatever, and I can just move it around everything else. So he decided to stop by and hang out at the show there. Yes. He, he, he He's trying to claim credit that at that show, he is the reason why I, I made any money at all. But there is still uh, – we're still waiting on a fact check for that one. <laughs> they, um, uh, obviously, it wasn't enough money to hire a fact checker in no. order to prove this. <laughs> so, the, um, uh, so, so you know, I, the, the funny thing is, is, you know, we really haven't got an opportunity to do the – I know it's kind of a, you know obvious and 
obvious and foolish question, but we haven't had a chance to really do a lot of the the shows and the cons and everything else. You know, what's your experience been like? You know, doing those. You know, I don't think we asked you this in the last podcast about like what you know what is your experience like where did you start with the cons what was one of your first cons and what has your ex- experience been like so oh, far that goes back a long long time so i uh in college still uh i met a uh someone i, I met a lot of uh models and everything through craigslist because i was trying to do body paintings and other things like that because that's the best way to find people man at craigslist <laughs> they uh, you know, i'll tell you what you know those personal ads they'll get you they, hey uh, and a lot of those models that i met through craigslist are now very close personal friends of mine so awesome. uh that's i awesome. mean there are still some uh, one or two weirdos down the way uh, maybe <laughs> we'll bro. maybe we'll talk about earl later on in the show but uh <laughs> we need to talk about her. Um, I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna bring it up as soon as you're done talking about cons. All yeah, right, we are definitely gonna remember that. <laughs> so, uh, this woman I met, uh, we were doing uh, a makeup and everything like that, just as something for for a school project, and uh, she asked if I wanted to do um, do her makeup for a, sh- a show called Horror Hound Weekend uh, in Cincinnati. And because she was only enter her costume into the contest or whatever, which she she won uh, out of three. I don't remember if it was second or third place, but she was in the top three. <laughs> anyway, so that was my first experience for a horror convention. And that wasn't vending or anything. I just went there uh, and it was really cool. I was really exciting. So after that, I kind of went to every single show after that. And then this, uh, let's see, the second our third horror hound I went to, there was also a show called Mask Fest. And Mask Fest is um is a show that works alongside with Horror Hound. And I was just like, this is so fucking cool. Like everyone here is just monsters all along the walls and everything like that. And I don't believe you guys have been to Mask Fest yet, but I have been no. doing Mask Fest for the past, let's see. Oh, Think, I think seven years. Can we get a fact check on that? Can we get yeah, a fact yeah. check? All I can say is that we have not Harold, done Mask Fest, fest yet. Uh, <laughs> Damn it, Harold! They, uh, that guy's a lazy son of a bitch, I'll tell you. They, yeah. uh, my, you know, fucking fact checker, man. They, uh, we hire them and they don't do shit. Because uh, guess what? Facts don't matter. Anyway. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no. Uh, so Mask Fest was like my true first experience in actually vending at a show. And I think tw- mm, 2016 was the very very first time i did or yeah maybe 2016 again fact check uh i believe that was my first time vending at a show and i've been doing it ever since and shortly down the line with doing mass fest i of course found out about other shows and conventions and i just kind of branched out from there uh so my experience so far is that every single show i do is just more and more people recognizing me and you know come by like they'll see me at one show and then you know two years down the road it's like hey i remember you from the other show so it's been a really fun experience and i'm really sad that um uh, mask fest was not able to come back this year due to covid and everything like that there was there was some hope from the showrunners saying that there's a possibility of mass fest returning for 2022 but unfortunately they just were not able to uh set it up in time or appropriate appropriately to make it fair to all the vendors who would have come out for the show but uh 2023 i do believe it is coming back so i'm very very happy excited to get back to my mask making family which i i really consider on because every for doing it after like seven years or however long i've been doing it for it, you see the same people every time you come back and it's just like it's like hey hey it's just for three <laughs> days you're just with this clusterfuck of a family (laughs) (laughs) where is mass fest again mask fest is usually uh in indianapolis uh at the same time as horror hound uh weekend is and typically as i've been doing the shows they usually do it uh either between august and september is usually when it takes place Nice, nice. The um, you know, and it's it's crazy too because the um, you know, Zach and I have talked about this a million times, but uh, like it, it's crazy, like how amazing the horror community actually is. It's it's insane on how friendly and how engaging mm-hmm. and how more than willing to help. You know, I, Sarah, this is one of like 
Sarah's first ones where she was actually going there with the intention of meeting other artists to like, you know, ask advice and, you know, and mm-hmm. see about like, hey, you know, you know, what what was your first con? How did you get it? Because she's she's looking into buying things. And remember, she came up to me, you know, at, when we were towards the end of the evening because we were there for a while. I think we were, I was there until like from 11 to 5. Which one was that, Zach, that we were at? Was it Flashback? Oh, uh, no. Days of the Dead. It was Days of the Dead. Yeah. Um, which was amazing. And Flashback is also good. It's, it's right around the same location, I believe. And um, – and she was like, I, I can't believe like how nice and kind and like and more than willing, more than willing to help like and actually give information and advice. Mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, this is what I did. This is, you know, hey, if you ever need any help, you know, let me know. And, you know, I'll be willing to, you know, help you out. And which is crazy. And like and I'm like, I'm like that's the, the horror community. Like that's 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 them. They they are the, the, the you know, and it's so ironic because it's, you know, horror is it has such a, you know, negative, you know, it's it's the slashing yeah. and destruction mm-hmm. and do, horror, humans yeah. and monsters there, doing horrible is, things down there. Like, <laughs> there is no more dedicated dedicated fans uh than the horror community i mean my my actually my friend paul argued with me that there is one uh film community that was more dedicated than horror which he argues is the porn industry which i guess you can say is the i, I don't know man. Yeah, that that's that's a good argument that's yeah. a good fucking see, argument see, here's the other thing too with that industry porn does it first the first movie everything if if porn Damn, does it Everything follows suit with Hollywood and everything so else. All I'm going to say is the but, moment VR technology came out, like it wasn't even a week. There was already <laughs> VR porn videos on Oculus. I'm like, Jesus are, Christ. Are you, are you speaking from personal experience, Zach? Uh, I plead the fifth. The, uh, can we, can <laughs> do we get a fact check on that? <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, no, the horror community is just some uh, some of the most loving and caring and crazy sons sons of bitches out there uh as far as the love for a genre you don't get that with rom-coms or or uh you know maybe with action films a little bit but you don't really get it i would say with action the horror films community. are the closest like second closest maybe, maybe sci-fi as well I yeah think, uh, well sci-fi can go hand in hand with sure. with uh horror uh i mean it really does uh because some depending on who you ask opinion is everything uh so, but yeah, no, yeah, it's, 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 it's a lovely thing. And being able to go to conventions and things like that to meet like-minded people is just, it's, it's inspiring, it's motivating. And I, 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 I definitely encourage any old, young, any type of artist who has yet to be to a convention to just, you know, spend the extra 20, 30, $40 for a weekend uh, to a convention in your local town and just be like, you know, check out some amazing art, meet and network with amazing artists like yourselves. You know, it's it's really, you know, you can't you can't beat that experience. You really can't. No, you you, you can't. And, and, you know, and, and the crazy thing, and, and it was kind of funny when you were saying, like, you know, I'm running in the same people and like, you know, like, hey, you, you, you know, and, and I think, too, with, um, uh, you know, with us going to so many cons, we're starting to run into the same people and having very similar conversations. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it, it's crazy that um, I mean, you know. Amy and Lon and you have all become really close friends, uh, you know, like, um, uh, you know, and it's really, really cool that, you know, like, yeah, we're all, we're all doing stuff when we work together professionally, you know, but it's, it's really cool to, to see the, the really genuine friendships that have blossomed out of, out of those. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, especially, you know, Amy and Lon, I ended up meeting, you know, through another business networking thing. And then, and then they kind of came into the fold and then we met them at shows. You, we met at a show. Yes. Like we, we, we met you at a show. Mm-hmm. It was at your booth and everything else. And then we, and then you invited, uh, we invited yeah. you into our crazy little world. Yeah. The, um, uh, but it, it, it's, it's really crazy to see all the, relationships that have blossomed from from that and seeing the same people and just meeting new people all the time it's it, it's crazy and i mean I'm, I'm sure zach will back me up on on his perspective on the and the, the cons as well i mean dude absolutely i mean Corey and rob are two other people especially like yeah i mean, the, I mean rob helped us uh, compose episode four and cory has been pumping out really He's the only rapper I actually listen to. That is a compliment, my friend. You make some awesome fucking music. And Rob, too. Don't stop. And put it on that. Put it on the thing. I don't know, point of the camera. Corey, get your ass to the U.S. I, I am tired of seeing how you do shows in Canada all the time. Get to the U.S. I, you know what? I will help you find a venue out here. They, I will help you find a venue in Chicago. Please, for the love of God, make the trip. I want to see you in that chair. 
would they, be uh, fucking awesome. They would be fucking dope. But, but anyways, back to Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, no, it's it's just a, or Mark. It, it, it's just been a cool experience. The overall, so it, it, it's um, and it's it's crazy to think that that was three years ago. The yeah. uh, three and a half years ago that we met you at uh, which that was the one in Central Illinois that we went to. Yeah, Central yeah. Illinois. They, yeah, um, the Dark History and Horror Convention, which is coming up again in uh in August. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. The um, uh, which which is awesome. So now. Um, this this talk about the conventions is over. Now we get to go to Earl. Oh, Earl, um, yes. Uh, yes, and tell me what the fuck's going on with Earl. Who okay. the fuck is Earl? So, uh, <laughs> like I said before, uh, back when uh, Craigslist was uh, where you can just post for free looking for, for people. Wait, um, wait, 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 wait. You have to pay for Craigslist now? For Yeah, if you want to pay, uh, post something like, is like, hey, I'm looking for a model to do this shoot, or I'm looking for an artist to do this poster, or whatever. You have to pay Craigslist in order to make that post. Well, shit. <laughs> I mean, I haven't been on Craigslist in years, so I don't know if they changed that or not. But the last I checked, that is what it is. I had nothing with bad experiences with <laughs> Craigslist trying to get actors. So, no. Yeah, we have well, we have a lot better success with backstage <laughs> than, uh, than fucking around on Craigslist. That's Yeah, no, that's stupid. Yeah, so. Back on, to Earl. Yeah, <laughs> on, on uh, Craigslist there, I would find models for body painting and a lot of models for the failed experiment series as well, uh, you know, through Craigslist. And the one experience was this guy named Earl. He is a nude model. I've never worked with him before. <laughs> So he he would he, he sent an email uh, interested in, uh, uh, you know, being a model for whatever I was doing. Either that. No, wait, no. It was for a movie I was doing. That's right. It was for a movie that has, you know, never got finished for reasons that I will not get into. Uh, with Earl there, uh, he, he messaged me about a, a part for a film I was doing. One of the first films, I believe. And it, it was a normal email, you know proper paragraph and everything like that and no when i errors <laughs> yeah and when i sent them an email back telling him more information he responded back with a same amount of paragraph but in all capital letters all capital letters and asking things that you would not think people would ask <laughs> and i remember now there is a scene for this film where someone's uh penis was going to be cut off. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. This is how Dennis just drops shit in the conversation. Like, he's like, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, and make a monster dick. Like, you know, it's like yeah. it's a massive dick. Hey, you guys want to see it? The, 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 it just comes Only out. when Dennis is around will penises come up in the, a the, topic of conversation. The, and, and we're in, like, in, in like, in Dennis, like, in, in funny thing, in Dennis, I don't, don't let him fool you, like, right now with him laughing. He's laughing because he's with us, but he's such a fucking professional like you know when he talked about like anything like you know he, 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 go back and watch the original podcast with him he goes into a whole <laughs> breakdown about how like you know like be professional and like it's just body parts and like you know and, and us playing fucking lightsabers with yeah. the fucking monster dicks and everything like, I'm we're, pretty sure I slapped David in the face with the purple penis you did and it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty great. So, so yeah, though Dennis is a very like a consummate per, for a professional when it comes to like anybody being nude or any kind of body parts or whatever. Very, very professional. Thank you. Now back to the story. Yeah, back to the story. So yeah, it was for a role where um that was on being an effect that I was going to do, and it was just on being you know like a fake thing that I live casted or whatever, and just to cut a silicone thing. But this guy asked me if I was going to get a body from a hospital or like a morgue or something. And if I was going to be able to get that from, yeah. And if it was going to be a real body, if it was going to cut, he was asking me questions like that in this email in all capital letters. So he was screaming at you through email. <laughs> yes. <laughs> asking me if we were going to use an actual corpse to do this effect. <laughs> I can't uh, remember the last I, time I saw all caps rage. <laughs> I can still probably find those emails uh, in my old email there, but uh, because I did not delete them, I probably even starred them. Oh, but uh, <laughs> Dennis, if you still have them, send them to me. I will include them in this podcast because yes, I want do. to see please them. Please um, do. So uh, I believe I responded, as you said, I'm a professional. So I responded in a professional manner that we would not be using any real corpses. We would be using special effects and everything like that. I believe I got another response back, but I, I don't remember the full thing. And I didn't respond after that. So 
I believe I only heard back from that guy once, like a year later for a different thing. And I got the email, all capital letters still. <laughs> and I saw it was from a guy named Earl. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're, you're so much more of a professional than I would. See, I would have, I would have been like, "Why do you ask?" Because <laughs> just to see his fucking response of what, like, "Well, I'm into that. I'm into that." Bi- well, here we've now arrived. Yeah, here. no, I'll, the, uh... I'll, that was that was probably the weirdest experience. That was probably the only super weird experience I had from Craigslist, uh, other than mild and normal weird stuff. Oh. But that was the weirdest thing I ever got from Craigslist, and his name is Earl. And I know what he looks like, too, because he sent me a picture of himself in a nude modeling class. So I, I, I know what this man looks like. I will not share this picture because that would be inappropriate and uh, not professional. Please but- don't. <laughs> but it would also be pretty fucking funny. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I what I would do if I ran into this guy on the street. And I just what would I do? Just run up? It's like you're Earl. You're the guy with all capital letters. No, I, I no, so I, you I want to see the dead bodies, and I've seen your penis. This is weird. The, um, the, I certainly have a question. The um, okay. so um, we talked about Earl. So you know, you've obviously had you've been doing this for a very long time. So I would love to hear about some other um, interesting or awkward or funny or peculiar situations that have happened because you know a lot of people may not realize that you do a lot of life casts of people that are completely nude i know we were joking a little bit about but maybe i didn't add some context uh, you know in this that you've done life cast of people that are you know straight mm-hmm. up nude and you know obviously because you need to we can say it penises they, and vaginas penises there and thing. vaginas and boobs breasts you they, know and, and, and asses they um it's all there they, <laughs> boobies they um uh, again again the uh two jackasses and one professional they um uh, the, you can figure out which one is which very easily the um uh, <laughs> exactly um uh, but that being said, you know, I'm, I'm very curious on, you know, obviously Earl's the top of the list, but who's, you know, who's your runner <laughs> up in your bronze medal? Well, as far as life casting goes, all of my experiences with that have been very, uh, you know, straightforward, normal, you know, uh, you know, no awkward moments or anything like that. The only weird one that's probably one I've done, I've uh, talked about before was the, uh, very first time I've life casted someone and it was for the same project actually that we were talking about in regards to Earl uh I had to life cast uh the actor's penis so that way uh you know we could cut it off in the scene and I it was my first time life casting so what happens with silicone is that it likes to mechanically lock onto hair whether it's arm hair or whatever so if you're using like body double regular body double uh it is uh it mechanically locks onto hairs so you have to use a mold release cream whether that's vaseline or the uh mold release that you can get from uh the the same that is from from reynolds or whatever where you get the with the the silicone and i did not know this and so we started to life cast uh my friend's uh penis and <laughs> We had to cut him out of it because, you know, obviously he was not shaved or anything. And that, that, yeah. So we had to, (laughs) me and the other actress were down there, mainly her, with a tiny pair of safety scissors just kind of trimming around the mold to get him out of of the cast. See, see, so, I, see, I would have loved to have been there uh, to be a fly <laughs> on the wall and to, no, not even to see the whole act. I don't even, because yeah. I, I, can, I can imagine, but to just see his face when he first learned the knowledge that, <laughs> that this had now stuck to his pubes. From what I remember, and, he was very calm about it. Was it? From, okay. I'll have to ask him. I'm friends with him on Facebook still, but uh, <laughs> I'd have to ask him about it. But, from that point on, afterwards, I found out about the other material, which is body double silk, which is uh, uh, life casting silicone that has mold release mixed into the silicone. And I still use mold release, especially around the eyes, like eyelashes and eyebrows and everything like that. But I've life casted a guy with a full beard before, and this stuff comes right off. Nice. So I only wish I knew about that with my first experience with life casting. As <laughs> as far as other awkward moments or anything like that, 
there hasn't really been many other than uh, probably personally between myself or uh, someone else, uh, like in our own heads, like whether it's body painting or whatever, but there's never been awkward moments like that uh, as far as Earl level of awkward. <laughs> no one can get to the gold, man. Earl is the top of where it's like, I don't even bother with a response. It's just, you know what? We're here no. and, and that's where we're at. So we got the gold, we got yeah. the gold, we got the silver. <laughs> the, um, and maybe like a, you know, like a funny one, you know, like a funny situation yeah. for your bronze. The, yeah. you know, my, I'm just setting it up. You know, you got Earl at gold, gold medal. You got the pubes yeah. guy at silver medal. And then you got um, my, the, um, my, you know, maybe somebody else at bronze. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's in general in what I do, obviously, whether it's, it's body painting or life casting, you know, uh, either it's, you know, uh, for a body painting, you know, obviously down below, some people use, you know, pasties or, you know, there's also pasties for your crotch as well. I don't use those just because it saves time and, you know, it mainly because it saves time and I can just remove that kind of stuff in Photoshop. So when I first started doing body painting and stuff like that, you know, Ashley would just be laughing at me because I'd be like, hey, so the talking to the model, I'd be like, hey, so I just need to, you know, paint down here. Can you like move? you know move your stuff to the that way it's like yeah no yeah that, that's good that's good uh, uh you know uh and <laughs> so when i first started body painting that was really awkward for myself personally because you know when you have a model standing in front of you i'm pretty tall so i have to get on the floor i'm on you know cross leg or whatever on my knees or whatever i have to you know paint underneath or whatever Sometimes models, you know, if I ask them, it's like, can you bend forward a little bit? Sometimes they bend forward too much. And it's just, you know, completely in my face. It's like, no, not that kind of thing. You, you don't have to bend over that much. Um, the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, I, just, I just need you to like a bow, not, uh, yeah, you know. yeah, just, just, just bow over a little bit. But yeah. when I was first starting out, a lot of that kind of interaction where it's like, you know, as far as instructing the models, like, hey, do this and do that. I was not privy to as i am now so it was really awkward for me when i had to paint people's vaginas or whatever to make sure that they didn't show up in the shot or whatever that was that's pretty awkward for me it still kind of is i'm i'm much more professional about it now and it's not something where it's like you know i don't bat eye it's like hey you know you need to do this it's like hey you know do that for me or whatever uh but i'm trying to think of any other awkward moments in regards to filming or anything else. And I can't think of any off the top of my head. Uh, Earl is just filling my mind right now. It's like I, I Earl has invaded <laughs> illegally. The Elma uh, with his all caps fucking email. Yeah, man. The yeah. Elma. No, no, I just figured you would have like some kind of situation that was just kind of humorous. So, you know, on the pubes thing, man, it's pretty yeah. fucking funny. The Elma. <laughs> So, you know, like, you know, and it, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting how you, you know, you kind of have to, to do that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to, to hear about people's growing pains and yeah. like, you know, and, and learning, you know, how to not, you know, get somebody else's yeah. fucking vagina in your face. <laughs> they, um, uh, you know, they, excuse me, ma'am. No, no, a lot of people would love that. They, um, not when, you know, <laughs> you know, maybe your girlfriend's five oh, feet that direction. I just thought of one. This uh -oh. has, this has, um, this is because like I said, I, 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 uh, assist my friend Paul with his photo shoots and everything like that i'm not going to name any names or anything like that except for my friend paul he's a phenomenal photographer so we were doing this one shoot uh and this was probably like you know a year and a half ago we were doing this one shoot and it's like a, a weird bdsm uh, uh kinky fetish kind of shoot cool and you know i get there and everything like that we're setting up and things like lampshades and cheetah thongs were a thing uh milk I, I have saran wrap never heard those things in <laughs> so, the same sentence before i'll have to show you the pictures after the show please uh, um <laughs> zach's excited so it's like the most fucked up shopping so list i've ever when we were setting life. up and everything like that you know there's uh the the one who's kind of directing the whole thing who's also a model but she's she's the one who brought all the people together and Paul is just helping her shooting. So she's starting to take like headshots of all the people who are involved. Just, you know, sit on a stool, take a headshot kind of thing. And when she was done with all the people, she turned to me. It's like, hey, go ahead, take a seat. And I'm like, I beg your pardon. 
and she's like, yeah, no, I want, I want to get pictures of everyone who's involved with the project. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm just behind the scenes, man. There's, <laughs> you don't need that. And she's like, oh, no, come on. And Paul's backing me up at this point. He's like, yeah, no, he's he's just as saying this isn't his thing. So by this point, I realize she wants me to be involved in the shoot, <laughs> like be a part of the shoot, not just move lights, but be. A, and I'm just like, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but that, it's, I'm, I'm not doing that. So later on throughout the shoot, Again, uh, where <laughs> the uh, being a participant, yes. yeah. So, uh, as the shoot um, started, it was involved in some weird, really weird, and not the normal fetish stuff, but the just weird. So the the the, the woman who was organizing the whole thing's husband, she had like you know put baby oil all over him. He has a, he has a lovely lovely beer gut. He was in cheetah speedos. She had him hold on to a stiletto knife or something and put it into the waistband of said speedos and then put on a lampshade over his head. Uh, there was another girl who got wrapped up in saran wrap and then had a glass tabletop put on top of her and then milk poured or poured all over her or something like that. Uh, there was, you know, people who had, uh, dildos attached to their faces. And uh, again, like, uh, those were actually probably some of the coolest shots that came from that shoot. Anybody who gives me shit about being into <laughs> bloody stuff, I would, no, no, I, I'm into, th- what? <laughs> they, these gay f- fucking dildo, uh, dildo rhinos. Yeah, no. It, Saram wrap and gl- so again, I've I've been a part of some weird shoots. I've been to pornographic shoots. I've been I've been to all sorts of genre of photo shoots, film shoots, whatever. But that, not only just how weird it was, but the fact that they wanted me to be a part of that, like in the, sh- I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, bro. I, I, I'm 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I'm good, you guys, bro. you guys can have fun, but I'm just going. To, I'm going to stay here behind the camera and. Uh, not be covered in baby oil and have myself whipped. <laughs> the, uh, I am here to work and nothing else. The, uh, uh, not that kind of work either. The, uh, <laughs> the um, uh, so that's how about you, Mark? Uh, no, no I'm, I'm out, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? How, how about that? As a question, I'll backfire it towards you guys. What are some of the most awkward experiences you guys have had on a film set, photo shoot, or just in general oh, convention you know the, happening? I, we'll make we'll make that the question of the podcast, I suppose. Um, <laughs> uh, the uh, so um, uh, and the, Zach's gonna be hanging out on the on the uh, the wide cam because his camera just went out. Um, Bye, uh, cam. The um, uh, so um. Okay, um, uh, I'll I I think I'll give like most frustrating. Um, oh no 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 no! I I'm a, I take that back. I will talk about the most awkward. See, that's the beauty of it. See, when you when you're asked a question like that, it's kind of just something where it's like you can think of hundreds of them, but it's just like you can't think of one that comes to mind until it's just like, oh shit, yeah, no, that one. That's exactly how that happens. You can't think of them otherwise. Oh no, fuck no! I had to go through my mental rolodex. Um, <laughs> happened on Beware of the Clowns. Oh um, my! Uh, oh. Damn. So, so I had to do. Um, uh, by the way, like I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. I have um, not. The uh, that would be a fun movie night for you. Um, uh, so I, I there was a I, I played a leader of a cult um, of clowns uh, and um, uh, horror movie but uh, done by. Uh, so you, you you played yourself? No, I'm uh, just, yes, I'm I just did. kidding. The um, uh, <laughs> Dennis, I told you that in confidence. Um, uh, the <laughs> so um, so there was supposed to be a in the original script. There was supposed to be a sex scene between two clown girls and the clown king. And they were supposed to fucking, like, give him a hand job, And then, like, he's supposed to grab their tits. And then they're supposed to go, like, honk, honk. Um, so they could only get one girl to do this. Um, uh, so they got one girl. And the director pulled a, uh, pulled a good move, but then completely fucked himself after that. What he did was he 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 removed. There was actually like a huge bunch of actors that were there on set just watching it, and he's like, "All right, everybody, get the fuck out." They um uh, like we're only gonna have the DP here, me, and then the the sound the sound guy and the lighting guy. That's it. That's the only people that are gonna be because those are absolutely the necessity that needs mm-hmm. to be on set right As now. As you should, yeah. And I'm like I'm like oh this you know that was really cool. That's really really cool that he did that. That's really good. And that was the that was the end of of where he he, he did things. Um. Uh, 
everyone was cool. Like everyone was getting through the scene and doing this, this, and and no, nothing was awkward until until he tried to talk. And then he and 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 he'd be like and, and then he would crack like these the, the most ridiculous jokes. He'd be like, like like oh my god, this is this is crazy and everything else. Who fuck who at sicko wrote this? And I'm like, you fucking wrote it. You were the writer of this. The um uh, and like and like every other five minutes, he, he they try to crack the worst fucking dad joke while I'm trying to grab this this girl's tit. Which by the way, he was friends with. My current girlfriend at the time. I, that's the reason I got the fucking part in the first place because I knew I knew them, and then I had to go through a whole fucking thing about how Tim had to talk to her about being comfortable about be, being involved in a sex scene because you know for most actors that's just another Tuesday, um, but for everybody else it's a little weird. But and 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 like and it's just every two seconds he'd be like he'd be like oh it's getting a little cold in here huh the um <laughs> and we would, we would go what the fuck Tim <laughs> like none of like just dude just say action and cut that's the only fucking thing you have to say right now the um she's gonna give me a, a really awkward uh, hand job and I'm gonna say a ridiculous line that that Zach loves and I refuse to say it oh, and, come on Mark and now my you thing. know you wanna say it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dennis wants to hear it. Yeah, yeah, let's uh... I literally look at the camera and I'm like, turn my cock into a T-Rex. <laughs> like like cuz it was like a fucking balloon animal. <laughs> like, like everything was a balloon animal and it would make balloon animal <laughs> sounds. <laughs> so, I was in this movie. This happened. The um and I've watched it four times. I'm sorry. I watched it once in the theater, which was really cool. And then I never wanted to watch it again until all of my friends <laughs> found out about it, and I had to watch it with them because I got I got dragged into it. Um, uh, and Zach still to this day loves that line. That's his favorite line of the whole fucking movie. And and then you know, I, and then you literally he added in a honk honk um, sound effects in in post when I grabbed her tits, um, the very small tits that she actually had. Um, uh, the um, it, just, it was just bad. Like it was just, it was so fucking bad, um, uh, you know, about it. it. Was it was it was just sounds like he was uh, really n- nervous himself. Uh, extremely, you know. <laughs> extremely nervous. I, I I don't think that he. You know, I imagine that it's very similar in the same vein of you. You know, when you have to ask, you have to ask people to do things yeah. that are that are stereotypically uncomfortable. Like because for the sake of art, like I gotta yeah. get this job done. Like you know, like I need you, I need to like you to fucking, I need to touch your vagina. Like you know, to or, well, or, or you know something like that. that. It's not so much directly as I'm going to touch. It's it's more so. I need to paint it. Yes, yes. It's it's not directly you know hands Hand on, on hands, kind of thing. But, it's more so like hey, hey, I need you to move your leg a certain way so that way I can get this crease or whatever. It's yeah. it's it's not so much direct as. Hey, I need to. It, 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 none of that. No, yeah, no. It's just, no. It's, it's, if it's if any touching needs to happen, that is on the model themselves. I do that. That is not necessary for me to do. Okay, they do it themselves. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, but you, just but, just to clarify, no need to fact check that. I can fact check that myself. Fair enough. <laughs> they, um, uh, fair enough. We the, 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 that 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 asshole left anyway. They um. But you understand the concept of, of having to yes. have uncomfortable conversations for the sake of getting the job done. And I and I just don't think that he had the bandwidth to to do it. Mm-hmm. But Everybody else seemingly did. Like, you know, everyone else was cool with this. Like, we knew what we were signing up for. I had already talked about it with the actress before. Um, we knew what we had to do to get it done. We got it done in, like, in like maybe two takes. I think we did We did literally one take, and that was the take that was good enough. And then we did one for safety, and then that was it. Mm-hmm. The, um, so it was very, very in and out. But I just... Just, just, that's, that's, just, I guess that's what she said. Huh? I, uh, <laughs> the, um, uh, I just remember, though, though how... Like oh I take that back actually we did four takes total because he had to do a uh, a push in on me um uh, be- saying that that line your wording is I, very 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 cleverly placed they, right oh here. absolutely the um uh, you know and I, I didn't even do it on purpose uh, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it um uh, but yeah that was that has to be you know and then the other the other one that maybe I'll tell at, at, at a later time is is the reason why I hate working with elevators. Oh um, my! The I had to work with an elevator in a, in a in a in a TV show that I was in, and it was one of the most frustrating things I've ever been a part of. So, um, so Zach, you can use the wide and answer that question. So for me, it, it, this one dates back to a while ago when I was still doing freelance work. So I uh, I got a job to be an audio guy, um, boom holder actually, which I don't know why people kept giving me boom holder positions, but it was, it was what I was getting. So fuck it. So. 
I'm on this job and I'm helping the audio guy get set up or whatever. His name was Mark, funny enough. Um, <laughs> I know a few Mark audio guys funny, but anyways, so we're we're going through the thing and I assume this person was the AD. She comes over and asks, what frame rate are you shooting at? And we're just like, what? What frame rate are you shooting at? What, what the hell are you talking about? We're the audio department. I know. What frame rate are you shooting at? And then Mark proceeds to have the biggest raged outfit I've ever seen. I've, the, the guy seemed cool, you know, pretty laid back, but he just goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you asking me for it? Who, how did you get this position? And he's just going nuts. Everyone around here is just looking at us. I put the boom pole down and I just walk off to the crafty table and get myself a tea. I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm out. That's 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 like that's like you know either like you had two reactions you got Zach's reaction of just like ah, I'm just gonna go to the crap table or you get that everyone's like butt, butthole gets like really tight then you go see that's that's the beauty with having a a team that you know well so yeah. that way when you have new people that are on set or anything like that newbies or whatever uh, so for example like on on later there's been several situations where you know people are very I make sure communication is like. So, you know, solid communication is so important on a set, regardless if that's, you know, public knowledge to everybody who's on set or behind the scenes with just the director, the AD and whoever else. So if somebody, uh, for example, my uh, uh, AD or whatever notices something or how an extra or an actor, actress or whatever happens to be nervous or upset or any sort of feeling that not necessarily would cause drama or whatever, but could pr prove to be something that would not be good for the production or for, you know, personal reputations or whatever. You know, I tell people, if you see something or you have a problem, you just come to me or, you know, said person who is also in charge or whatever. You tell us and you talk about it. And that way, if something does start to happen, we know ahead of time where we can de-escalate Again, we've never had this happen on our own sets. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, things where like that happen where it's like, oh, we've noticed someone was upset or whatever have you. Uh, and we are now aware of that situation. And if something does happen, we can take care of it properly where it doesn't happen to be in blow up on set where everyone knows this is and then that's just something that's heard throughout the ages where it's like hey this happened on that set don't work with them or you know whatever it's always good to keep things professional and just have that mindset that if something does go wrong don't panic and just you know keep going <laughs> yeah keep going. Know, uh, <laughs> for the record uh this was a i think i found this job on uh it was either craigslist, craigslist or <laughs> one of the two i'm leaning towards With craigslist, the earls of the world <laughs> fucking no shit so i i found, and i didn't know a single person on this set mm -hmm. i was just like i was just college student looking for money looking for work exposure trying to network and all that shit and after that i was just like never doing audio jobs again i don't give a fuck what the pay is I, I will make exceptions for friends, but for the most part, fuck that. Dude, audio is so, Did, did so you ever tough. find out the answer to your to the, the 80s question? Oh, uh, <laughs> That's actually a good fucking question to ask, because I'm curious, too. They, Jesus Christ. They, um, uh, yeah, that's pretty fucking great. And they, also, you could also be on a set where the, eight, or the, um, uh, the DP literally disappears for two hours and goes and takes a nap upstairs. And Zach knows exactly what what set I'm talking about. <laughs> the um, uh, the um, it would be the the the. Uh, I am blanking on that right now. The uh, the uh, the the cult comedy. Oh Jesus Christ! With M and F, they uh, or um, M and J. Yeah, yeah. They, fuck it. Uh, um, uh, the um, uh, the yeah, the uh, yeah that that happened. That was on a set that we were on. That the fucking DP literally disappeared for like for like an, an hour and a half, and then and then literally said, um, "Fuck you all, I'm leaving." And then somebody else had to come in as a temporary DP. <laughs> that it, the um, uh, it's sometimes it's truly amazing how you know people can, can actually function in a set and everything else. I mean, you know, I uh, Zach's had plenty of horror stories. I've had plenty of horror stories, but uh, but yeah, definitely the most awkward though was 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 Tim on that and everything else. And uh, 
I was also like, I think I, I think that was the same day that I was there, like really fucking late, and I was about done. That and and that's in the outtakes actually. Like when when the when the one girl is like unconscious, and I'm giving her, I'm like painting her face, and she kept on fucking laughing. They um she would ruin so many takes. I'm like, and the whole thing it was supposed to be like like kind of funny but super mm-hmm. sadistic, where I would like grab her hands and I'm like you're happy and you know and clap your hands. I would literally make her hands clap, and then she would laugh, and then literally one of the outtakes, but. But the funny thing, I made the whole crew laugh, but I was dead fucking pissed off. And I literally, like, and then, she, like, I went to, you know, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. And then, like, and then she started laughing. I'm like, if you fucked up the take, clap your hands. And then the whole crew went laughing. I'm like, I'm fucking serious. Like, I am done, man. Like, it's like one in the morning. Like, we need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, Mark there's had a... one of his pampered actor moments. See, uh, no, no, I was, you know what? That was a legitimate reason for me to be pissed off because, because I, I'm not joking. I believe it was 15 takes. The um, it was 15 takes. <laughs> That's you know, a lot. And, I, and, I, and I'm like, and I'm like, no, man, I'm 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 done. Like, you need to, you, you, you as an actor need to get your shit together, man. Like, cause that 15 takes to have you not laugh, mm-hmm. everything else in a non-comedy, no, not at all. Yeah, there's there's a certain mo- moment on set where you can definitely tell when everyone's uh, energy levels just start to dwindle. Yes. And uh, just. Especially after you feed them. So, like, I've learned uh, for a while now, and this is all thanks to later, you feed people at the appropriate time and after all the biggest, most pain in the ass stuff is done. Because if you feed them too early or anything like that, then things start to slow down immensely and you just, you waste time and you, uh, you know, energy and everything like that. So, it's always good to just plan ahead and... Especially now, because I, I've I've packed a lot of stuff. I had a lot of days where it's like you know I, you know, get on set at seven a.m., leave the next day at seven a.m., come back at five p.m. and uh, you know, do it all over again. And you know, even though as fun as it is to have those experiences, it's really not good to do that because then you 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 know you can get people that are annoyed and you know things like that and. Everyone had a good time, of course, but it, again, people get tired. So again, going back to all the way to the beginning and talking about planning before we started the podcast here, getting things you know ready and planned out and making sure you're not putting too much into a single day. Because I've had people for other projects say uh, like, oh, we want to do this, this, and that. And I'm just like, my friend, I, I, I strongly suggest that you put this amongst three different days and not just one single day because you know if you have to get a jib out that's a 24 foot jib that's one day that is one day my friend (laughs) if you need to do this effect make sure you get as many of those shots as you can with this effect other or this suit or whatever otherwise you don't have to do a whole nother day you cannot pack all this in in one day (laughs) oh we we can speak to experience on the steady cam on episode four the um uh, you know about you know all the prep time to get and I actually I just wanted to say a, give a thank you especially to um you Vinny and Sarah and Lily I believe Lily was on the last day as well but especially for you and um uh, um the you and Vinny um you guys were were there on both days as mm-hmm. actors and everything else and we really appreciate that you guys bringing yeah, that course. energy and. Um, and, and keeping it going because I know that we you know ever ever all the other act it kind of sucks whenever all the other actors have kind of you know been let go and but you guys got to stick around and, and still do your thing so you know I I really appreciate it as an as an, a fellow actor I appreciated mm-hmm. that that you guys were were down and game to, to stick around and, and, and hang out and oh yeah no I'm I'm always down for sticking around and making sure things get packed up and everything like that especially as an FX artist sometimes the uh, uh, you know like, uh, for example, yesterday I was on set, you know, for a, a commercial thing, uh, and it, it, it was one of those things where it's not very effects heavy, it's not something I do very often, but it was like, you know, the first three hours of the day was the bulk of the work we did, and the, another five hours was just sitting around doing nothing. And it's not one of those productions where you go, like normally I go out and it's like, hey, can I help with this, or hey, I'm going to watch this being filmed, but it's, it wasn't one of those kind of productions. They one had their jobs, you know. After you're done your job, you you sit tight and wait for the next thing to happen. So it it was hard for me to just sit there and just wait, you know, two hours and then, oh, we're going to touch this up. It's like, okay, that took 10 minutes. Then more waiting. Yeah. (laughs) It was a very good set. Ran smoothly. 
great people, everything like that. But there's just... Ugh. It's an unfortunate <laughs> reality of the situation. And I used to joke all the time, and I'll end it here, um, is that the military invented hurry up and wait, but the entertainment industry perfected it. Um, uh, so it's it's always been a crazy thing. So um, so we will. We, we, this is an awesome time a, a chatting with you <laughs> and catching up and you know talking about Earl. Um, yeah. I, the um, so this is your opportunity, sir, to look directly into that camera uh, that you're at and uh, plug your uh, all your your website. Um, your, your shop, all the things you were doing, the next con you're going to be at, and then also your movie, yeah, um, uh, your current film that you're that you're working ah, on. Ah, yes, right now. yes. I don't think there's a plug in the camera for that, but the, I can try. No, I'm just kidding. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, dad, on the dad, dad joke. joke. Dad joke. <laughs> dad joke. Joke alert. Uh, no, uh, you can find me at various uh, social medias. You can find them all through my website at PrestonPerspectives.com. Uh, you can also find my shop through uh, my website as well. Everything can be found through my website. But if you're looking for individual things like Instagram, that's Preston underscore perspectives. If you're looking at things like filmmaking, like the latest film that I am working on that we'll hopefully have done soon. We can't say a release date yet because we don't know and we don't want to lie to you. Uh, you can go to latermovie.com to follow the Facebook page and watch the trailer and all those fun things. Um, and... Yeah, and then also, if you guys are new to this podcast, be sure to follow uh, the Midwest Horror Network and all platforms across uh, across the board. And, of course, thank you, Dennis. Uh, and, of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, if you could be so awesome to stab that like button, smash that subscribe, and click that little dingy bell to be notified every time we drop amazing content right here on MHN. It's going to be an, uh, it's going to be a lot of awesome shit on there. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time on the Nightmares Podcast. Mm-hmm.